So when I started the IB, I had no idea what I wanted to study in university. So what did I do? I chose my six subjects really randomly. I chose them based on what I was feeling and not based on some, some sort of thought process as to what I might want. This, um, this wasn't the best choice. It really messed up what I might want to study. Hey everybody, welcome back. For those of you who are new here, my name is Emiliano. I did the IB from 2018 to 2020, and I'm now seven or eight months into my gap year. Next year, I plan to study medicine abroad. Although I'm working on a video on how to choose what country you go to, so stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button so you won't miss it. So when I started the IB, I had to choose six subjects based on what I want to study and where. However, I had no idea what I wanted to study. That led me to make some really bad or interesting choices that wouldn't help me in the future. This was a mistake almost two years in the making. So how is this a mistake? Well, basically it's because I chose the wrong subjects based on what I wanted to study. For example, I want to study medicine abroad. So I should have taken chemistry. Instead, I didn't. However, I'm still going to be able to study medicine abroad. So stay here to find out how that is. So for those of you who don't know what the IB is, make sure to check out my video on what makes the IB the most difficult curriculum in the world. I'll leave it up somewhere around here. A quick breakdown of the subjects is that you choose six of them, three at higher level and three at standard level. Mine were higher level biology, history and English literature and standard level German, design technology and mathematics. So what's the problem? The problem was that I had no clue what I wanted to study, so I chose my subjects all willy-nilly. I, I had no real consideration as to what I wanted. This was my mistake. Most universities care very deeply about your subjects, whether you've taken them higher, standard level, and they assume you've chosen your subjects consciously and based on what you want and not unconsciously like I did. But I do have some justification. Hear me out. It's important to realize that when making your subject choices, there should be a fine balance between correct subject choices and making sure you can get a good score. Because getting a good score and the correct subject choices are paramount to getting into a good university. So what do I mean by this? Let me use myself as a quick example and hope my school's chemistry teacher doesn't watch this in the future or ever. I didn't take chemistry, as, as you've heard before, and that prevented me from studying at any university in the UK, basically, because they require chemistry at higher level. But me taking chemistry might not have solved that problem, and that's because of the teacher and the grade I probably would have gotten. So my school's chemistry teacher is a really, really smart man who studied at Oxford. He was a real academic. However, he wasn't meant to be a teacher. Of the entire chem class or chemistry class, which was 12 to 10 people, three or four were getting above a four consistently in practice tests. The rest really weren't. Now that means that A, they weren't really learning chemistry or else they would have been performing way better. Two, they spent two years of their lives really worried about the tests that were coming at the end of, of the year because they knew they would do badly. They knew that they weren't prepared and that any bad grade would really pull down their average and mess up any chance of getting into any good university. Even if the university really wasn't looking at exactly the bad chemistry grade, any bad grade really pulls down your average and hurts your chances of getting into any good university because of your bad average. That's why it's important to strike some sort of balance between good grades and good subject choices. Because good subject choices but terrible grades won't get you anywhere, but really good grades and not very fitting subject choices isn't the solution either. So there has to be some sort of equilibrium there where there, there can be some sort of compromise or sacrifice. So this balance, this equilibrium, gets you to where you want to go. So yeah, for example, me. I'm absolute garbage at chemistry. I could have made it up in other ways though. I could have taken it as a standard level 
and try to make up in the eyes of universities. I could have tried to overcome the challenge of a teacher that's not supposed to be a teacher, along with take extra tutoring lessons. Or I could just look at different universities and not take chemistry, which is what I'm doing. So how could I have avoided choosing the wrong subjects in the IB? Simple, really. I could have been intentional about my choices and I could have been a bit more thoughtful about what I wanted to study or how I could have made my life a bit easier for future me. However, despite having done the wrong subjects, I don't want this video's takeaway to be negative or to be myself putting my past self down, right? Because retrospectively, I wouldn't change any of the subjects I took or, okay, that's not true. I wouldn't change most of the subjects I took, right? I would change a few of them, but not all of them at all. I think in the end, I made the correct choices, or at least I learned to enjoy the choices I made and to live with them. And that's the important part. But wait a second, why wouldn't I change them if they can get me into a university in the UK, where it was where I originally wanted to study? I'll dive into it. English literature was undoubtedly the best class I took. It taught me why I love reading, and it taught me the intricacy of language and how it's such a beautiful thing, so malleable and so easy to use if you know it. It really was the best class I took and I wouldn't change it for anything. Biology made me realize what I want to study before I even knew myself. It taught me what I liked when that wasn't something I had even thought of. Also, learning how the human body works deep inside us at an almost molecular level is great. It was really interesting and I learned a lot of new stuff I had never even thought of before. History was also amazing, although it was tough and it was only amazing retrospectively. I learned so much about different cultures and different ways of the world. Every class and every lesson was like traveling and nobody really dislikes traveling. Right? So every class getting to learn something new and immerse yourself in the eyes of a soldier during, during World War II or a poor person during Mao Zedong's regime, it was very enlightening. It was, it was great. It really gave me insight into what the world is, was, and it somehow taught me to appreciate what we have because many people haven't had it and still don't have it. Design technology was great because it taught me the why, the reason behind everyday things like paper clips, like cars, like chairs. It also taught me how I can merge two things I really love and produce an even better thing. It taught me that the destination really is or can be the journey, although it does depend on your point of view and your perspective. German, German I would change to be honest. I would change German for French. I won't say French Y yet, but I will in the future. And maths? I mean, let's not talk about maths, fine? If I could have not taken maths, I would have, but I had to. And so I took them and it was fine. It was tough, it was challenging. I'm just not a maths guy myself. And that's that. All my IB videos in my IB playlist, which you can check out around here or around here, I'm not sure. The university ones are coming. They will come, I promise. If you want to see something specific about the IB, please leave a comment or send me a, a message via Twitter or Instagram and I'll respond and I might be able to work that in. For those of you that have stuck this long, um, I'll give you a sneak peek or a hint as to what my next video videos might be. It'll either be what the correct subjects for medicine are for the IB, or it'll be how I'm planning on choosing or how I chose what countries I'm going to apply for for medical school. So yeah, if you wanna look at those, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and they'll be out next Thursday, or at least one of them will, although both are coming. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next week.